Hey, what's going on, guys? Kalamazi here. Day one, half of day one of uh, Dragonflight pre-patch is now in the books. And tonight's video, I want to talk a little bit about a few spicy builds. Some pretty strong builds have emerged for Affliction, Destruction, and I guess talk about the current state of Demonology, which, uh, spoilers ahead, is unfortunately not very good. Now, I have covered Aft, Demon, Destro, and Dragonflight pre-patch guides on the channel here as well. This should be um, this should be in the channel somewhere if you guys want to dig for them the last couple days. Uh, the Aft... Necrolord build is mostly the one we're gonna look at here. There's a new Destro build, which has actually been really strong in testing, and Demonology is a little... But most of the builds have been covered in those videos rotationally, but I'll cover them here, looking at talents, rotations, all that, and talk about legendary usage and all, all the other things. Now, uh, I believe yesterday we found out that Conduits are also now no longer overlapping with talents. So like uh, Withering Bolt, Carnivorous Stalker, Fell Commando, Born of Blood, um, Ashen Remains, those kind of effects. Uh, you don't want to double up on anymore. So that changed a lot of things in the videos, but we're going to cover that today. Uh, at the same time, the Demonology nerfs, the Dreadlash, Felon, Steel, and Torn, uh, I, think, I think it was Infernal Command nerfs, the nerfs to Dogs and Felstorm made it into uh, pre-patch, unfortunately. And also, Felstorm is bugged, uh, Grimoire of Sacrifice, and Synergy is bugged, I think Felsunder is bugged. There's a lot of bugs from beta at this point, but I'm hoping things are fixed soon. Uh, so yeah, we're going to cover that today. Uh... With that being said, I'm a little tired. It's five in the morning. Let's just jump right into it. Any questions, put them down below. Oh, I will have a link to a paste bin down below in the video description um, that has a link to all the builds I looked at today. Just copy the code and import it in the talent section of the game. It should work for you. Uh, oh, I guess I want to give a shout out to my patrons as well, guys. I almost forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for the support on Patreon, guys. Uh, much love. Seriously, I really do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Uh, so that being said, let's just jump right into it. Uh, we'll start off with Demonology. We'll start off with the bad and then get to uh, the good. Alrighty, so for those of you that are looking at playing Demonology, I was disappointed today overall. Demo's damage output is very, is much lower compared to Destro and Affliction, uh, who are playing uh, Necrolord. Now, there's some synergy with Destro, Necrolord, Destro, and Necrolord Affliction, which Demonology really doesn't have. There's no, like, unique interactions with talents and covenant abilities and all that. Demo is just mostly Demo. So, I mean, there's variations of builds you can play. Uh, this is the build I was recommending to start off with just like pets this is like pet build with reign of tyranny uh legendary wise with this build i was playing wilfred's for the most part we are not playing born of blood we're playing the conduit so i will say uh this is old fell commando this is carnivorous stalkers and this is uh, born of blood so these effects do not overlap with the conduits which is why i swapped the dreamweaver i'm playing born of blood conduit i'm also playing tyrant soul and soul eater because these are the two that don't share any kind of talents with the new demonology stuff so i play these two passively for the most part and then i play one at times two uh talent slash conduits now with this build i opted for, i opted for born of blood if you're playing an implosion aoe build which is a you know in the actual paste bin down below there's various builds you go through born of blood so you'll grab or demonic knowledge so you'll grab that grab implosion and i skipped carnivorous stalkers and played the conduit it's a it's a, a game pre patch is gonna be wild we knew it would be pretty cool though uh it works out all right so this is like the single target pet build with Reign of Tyranny I was playing. Uh, Biofiend, Demonic Strength is still bugged, unfortunately. I believe this is bugged with two Demon Locks in the raid. Uh, if you want this to work, you have to talent out of Fell and Steel, and it will work, but I think this is a better talent to have overall. Uh, unfortunately, this was nerfed from 20 to 10, from 25 to 10. This was nerfed from, uh, I think, 10 to 5. Uh, everything else is working for the most part, though. Grimoire is solid, obviously. Carnivorous, second, or third dog, Demonic Meteor. One point in armaments here for more Felgar damage. I'm playing Vilefiend here. It might be better to play Soul Strike just based on Vilefiend sucks to cast and all that. I'm probably going to do that at some point, but Demo sucks. Uh, Tyrant, two points in Soulbound Tyrant for five shards. We're playing Reign of Tyranny. Now, I'll, we'll look at it in combat in a minute here. The big thing with this build was that uh, the ideology behind it was, okay, I can play Reign of Tyranny, which is like Decon replacement, and I can still play Wilfred's legendary effect because you can't overlap legendary effects. So we're not playing Grand Warlocks and Wilfred's, but you can play Reign sort of like Decon and Wilfred, right? Uh, I have a final point floating around here. I just threw it in Fell Covenant. You can put it wherever you want. It doesn't really matter a whole lot. Um, the unfortunate part about Demonology is that you don't have the last five capstone points. No spec does, but Demonology feels incomplete. Not having access to Expendables or Infernal Command or even like Portal and Rain if you want or whatever. Or if you're playing Demon Bolt build, which is not going to be in this video, uh, but if you want, there's a link to it down below. It also sucks. Um, you don't have like Sack Souls and Full Tyrant. You go like Double Sack Souls, Tyrant, and Torrent at one point in this. And comparatively to Affliction or Destruction, 
They missed some points here and there too, but they feel much more complete. Demo feels like it's missing pieces of the spec, which we knew it would be like that in pre-patch just because level 60 is the max cap and we're missing five points, but it is what it is. So anyways, with that being said, we'll swap to our demo gear here and we'll look at the actual just raw damage output. Now I will say, unfortunately, well, I already mentioned it a bit, but Demology is doing much less damage um, than Affliction or Destruction is playing the actual builds that we're going to look at in a minute here. So uh, if you're playing Necrolord Demo, you can play Demon Bolt. If you're playing Demon Bolt build, you want to play Necrolord Demo for Decimating Bolt. We're not playing that. We're playing Night Fae. Um, so yeah, let's get into this. So it's going to be a similar open to, open to what we usually have here. Uh, we're going to clear this meter out here. We're going to just precast two Shadow Bolts here. There's a bug with shards not generating on pull. Chance to hire it's going to happen here. Just cast an extra Shadow Bolt. It's the world we live in. So Shadow Bolt, uh, we didn't get the bug, which is nice. All right, five shards. So we'll go Grimoire, Vile Fiends. We'll build the five shards here. I'm playing the wrong trinket, but it's fine. Uh, we'll go Dogs, build the five. We're going to go Shadow Bolt. I'll go Shadow Bolt Hand. Shadow Bolt is fine. Going to the Tyrant. We can go Soul Rot, Hand of Cooled In, Demonic Strength. I'll even pot it because I forgot my trinket. I was wearing the wrong one. And for the most part, this is the same opener we had for a long time. We're casting Hands. We're casting Dogs. Watch the damage output here. It is just putrid. It is just nowhere near as good. Uh, Destruction bursts to like 40k in its opener. Aff bursts to like 35-ish, roughly, but Aff can do some insane execute damage. And even even if I play, if I pop my trinket here, we're not hitting even 24k, let alone 40k. Uh, the unfortunate part is also like while we do have tyrants coming back around pretty quickly, they seem to be like they seem to be like faster than a minute actually. They're pretty quick. Um, Unfortunately, those tyrants still just aren't really doing a whole lot of damage. If I open up my damage breakdown here, Decon's number one, but it's not number one by a commanding amount like it used to be. And the longer we go here, the less and less drops, or the more and more it drops off. So I'll trinket here for this one. I, I put the right effect on. It's only a Vile Fiend tyrant, but it's fine. We'll pop the Vile Fiend. Put the five here. Dogs. Hand. And our, this damage is just terrible. It, it, it is very, very, very bad compared to Anios. <laughs> So there's our setup. We're gonna Tyrant here. We'll Soul Rot, we'll Hand, Demonic Strength. Whenever he's on Fell Storming, which will refresh Fell Thunder. Should be about right now. We can Strength now. And even with that being the case, we can't even hit 17k. Like Tyrant is still number one, roughly. I'm hard casting a bolt here, but um, it, the damage is just nowhere near as good as you'll see in a minute here with Necro Lord, Destro, or Necro Lord Aff. Even outside of Necro Lord, you can still play Affliction with these upcoming builds for Aff and Destro and it does a lot more damage. So, unfortunately, uh, if you're a Destro fan, uh, also, they, I'm not going to look at AoE here and make this an hour-long video because it's 5 in the morning. I love you guys. But, um, unfortunately, with the dog nerfs, to Dreadlash, to F Fell and Steel, to everything else, even with Dread Calling, it's just not very good. Affliction does so much more damage in AoE, and so does Destro. So, if you're a Demo fan, Fingers crossed for buffs in pre-patch. It very well might happen, but at this point, unless you're in a chaotic moat kind of setting, it's not really looking the best. All right, so getting into the spicy destruction build, uh, I've also realized why I don't really test in Necrolord land very much. I'm not a Necrolord number one, but number two, uh, these mobs are incredibly annoying and they're just fighting in my right ear and they've been doing it for two years. Testing it here is actually miserable, but I can't really leave the Shadowlands because... Uh, Things don't work anymore, so you have to deal with it, Chatham or Chat YouTube, whoever. I'm sorry. Uh, anyways, so the build we're playing, uh, Chaos Bolt. We'll get right to it. We're playing Burn to Ashes. Chaos Bolt and Random Fire increase the damage of your next two incinerates by 30%, and it stacks four times. The damage effect does not stack four times, but you can get four stacks of the 30% amp. So you can essentially play. I'm playing Madness here. You can play OD or Odor, the cloak, whatever, that gives like more damage to your Havoc target. I can't take this noise anymore. Um, and make it so that like that target you put Havoc on is taking more damage from every spell, incinerate more damage. And when you stack that with Decimating Bolt, with Shard of Annihilation, with Roaring Blaze, with, with uh, Burn to Ashes, with other effects that increase incinerate damage, it hits really, really hard. Keep in mind, Shard of Annihilation increases crit damage and crit chance. So these incinerates are guaranteed to crit and they hit really, really hard. Now, we had to path through Havoc and Pandemonium to get Backlash, uh, Scalding Flames, all that kind of stuff here. Um, this is predominantly a single target build. You can play this in Havoc Cleave settings if you want. You can pull a point from like Ashen Remains, or I guess two from this. I guess you have to go three here. You can pull a point from somewhere to get rolling if you want, really. Uh, we are playing Ashen Remains. Keep in mind that it is a conduit, but instead we're playing uh, Combusting Engine, Infernal Brand, and Fatal Decimation. If you're in a Havoc setting, you can play Duplicitous Havoc, but conduits do indeed. They don't stack anymore, so you don't want to play a conduit and a talent. 
the same thing. Uh, besides that, Channel Demon Fire, uh, Raging Demon Fire, Reduce Conflict Rate Cooldown, Roaring Blaze for incinerate damage. Just Infernal, no Crashing Chaos or anything else here. I do like these abilities, but this build just incinerate damage. And you'll see it does a lot of damage. So keep in mind, uh, once again, Decimating Bolt does more damage or empowers incinerates more when mobs are at lower health. I've had 140k incinerates. Um, if you're a fan of Chaos Bolt and Madness play and all that, um, it still hits sort of hard, but Incinerate is your new Chaos Bolt. This thing hits so hard. Uh, so yeah, we'll open up here. I might scuff it a little bit. I'm playing Madness. Uh, once again, you can play OD or Odor or whatever. It's up to you. Yeah, well, whatever you want. Uh, so we'll go in. We'll precast the Decimating Bolt here. This precast Bolt. Going to an Immolate. Put the Rock down. Conflict Rate for uh, the buff. Uh, Worm Blaze CDF. Pop my Trinket. We can go Chaos Bolt, Chaos Bolt. Conflict Rate. Watch these Incinerates. 78k. 87k. 81k. I've had easily 120k Incinerates, 130k Incinerates, even more. Uh, double Bolt Dump again. We're at four stacks. We can Conflict Rate. Incinerate. Incinerate. I'll dump a Bolt or two here. Even with that, like, not even having any kind of decimating bolt buffs, they're still hitting really, really hard. This build I've seen open up at 40k or so, roughly in single target. And if we'll do one more cycle here of actual decimating bolt stuff, but decimating bolt just hits so, or empowers incinerate to hit so much harder than chaos bolt. Even with madness on, even dumping chaos bolt into chaos bolt into chaos bolt right here. Decimating bolt, boring blazes up, launch these. 70k. 75k. Launch couple bolts here. Bolt. Four stacks. Bolt, bolt. We can conflict rate once here. What are we at now? 70k bolt without a conflict rate up. Look at the damage breakdown here. We're sitting at 37% incinerate damage. I had to re record the section of the video too. I had an incinerate hit for 120k just sitting here doing this. I had a 140k incinerate before as well with trinkets and, uh, and timber procs and all that. These things hit incredibly hard. They hit so hard. So it's not even just Chaos Bolts anymore. It's literally almost any spell you cast. If you're in an arena, people got to worry about. I don't PvP, but I would not want to face a Destro Lock playing Necro Lord at this point. If you think like old Bolt or old build with the uh, Demon Bolt stuff was big, 96k right there, 100k, 81k. This is going to hit even worse. This is going to hit even harder. This build's actually insane. Um, the overall damage here is not as good as I have, I've seen, but I mean, I was sort of half AFK talking about things. Uh, the big thing, 40% of my damage, incinerate. 97k max crit, I've seen 120k, 130k. I had a 140k crit with uh, with a trinket proc, I believe, plus an unused trinket and uh, and Tumbra. If you're like potting, trinketing, and have every, everything lined up, you can easily, easily rip 150k incinerate. Plus the lower that the mob is in health, just emitting bolt scales are going to hit harder just in general, right? If you're deep in execute with pot, pot, trinket, and tumber proc, you're going to destroy this boss. Incinerate being 40% of our damage. Chaos bolt being 18, emulate being 11 and a half, partially due to combusting engine and things, CDF being 7 and a half. Uh, this build hits hard. It's really good. And you're also playing Plague, Plague Divisor. Yeah, so you literally have Kevin's Oozling damage amping everything else too. Um, it's just solid. I'm sure the dump windows could have been a little better there as well. It's also five in the morning, so I'm a little tired, but TLDR, this build's been good. It's been the strongest build I've seen for Destro in single target. I had assumed the best build in two target as well. We'll see how it goes the next few days, but uh, this has been much better than demonology and testing. But let's look at F for Necro Lord because that's also pretty good. All right, so when it comes to the big single target build for Affliction Warlock, that build is also Necrolord, and it revolves around Drain Soul. Uh, briefly, we're not playing Eyeball or Summon Soul Keeper here. We're playing Grim Feast. It's behind my camera. I'm playing it. It does not increase the damage of Drain Life. It causes it to channel faster, which makes it easier to play at certain times, because we're playing ID. Um, it's Drain Life, not Drain Soul. And it also, like I guess, gives you a chance to like fill with... Fill with Fill with other abilities or fresh dots, whatever. We're also playing uh, Accrued Vitality here and not Lifeblood because we're playing Drain Life. ID with either of these does a lot of healing. Uh, so the, the gist of this build, though, we're playing Drain Soul Damage Amps, uh, Unstable Affliction, Siphon Life, PS, obviously, Wrath and Agony. This is a dead talent. It's, it's bug, doesn't really do much at all, but it's just there. We need, we need to fill talent points. Nightfall, Double Shadows Embrace, uh, Soul Tap, Haunt into Haunted Soul. This ability is terrible, but we have to pay the price to get Haunted Soul. Dark Lair, Pandemic Invocation, Sacralash, and then two points in Inevitable Demise. Now, the 
big thing with this build, your Necrolord. Decimating Bolt increases damage of Drain Soul. It is currently buffing three Drain Souls and not one. It was buffing one Drain Soul for all of Shadowlands. It buffed three in Shadowlands Alpha. And this build was very, very good then. But it was very tedious to play because you, you didn't want to interrupt any Drain Soul cast. If you did, it was a huge damage loss. And when you were juggling seven dots with Haunt and Mechanics on you with 8% haste, it felt miserable to play. It's still very tedious now because you're still juggling three Drain Souls with five dots and Mechanics and all that. And you are also playing Malefic Wrath Legendary. So you have to Rapture once every seven seconds or whatever. But um, it's rewarding if played properly. Plus, this thing does so much damage to execute because Drain Soul... Decimating Bolt empowers the ability Drain Soul for AF. Uh, the lower the mob is on health whenever it hits a target. The same thing happens to Drain Soul. Drain Soul's damage is just doubled when a tar is, target is below 20% health. I don't think this thing, this thing will get that low here. We'll see. But this builds pretty well either way. Uh, we are also playing Soul Tap here. It is bugged. At times you'll Soul Tap and not get a shard for the boss's fold. Who knows? Uh, but it is what it is. So I don't, I, don't have, I don't have a pot here, but it's fine. I don't really need it. Uh, the big thing. Oh, I forgot to mention. Uh, Nightfall procs. If they proc on the Drain Souls that are buffed by Decimating Bolt, it feels really good because it increases Drain Soul damage and it also causes it to channel faster. Um, so we'll open up here. We'll see how it goes. And uh, I guess, yeah, we'll just go from there. Drain Soul is a large portion of your damage. This is a very punishing build if Malefic Wrath drops. Uh, you have Soul Tap to get it back up a bit. But if it drops at a bad time, it's sort of awkward. Uh, but it's very good in single target. So we'll wait on our pot here a second or two. I think we can do it now. It's fine. So we'll precast a haunt into oh yeah, precast a haunt into an unstable affliction, agony, corruption, siphon life. We're gonna drain three stacks of shadows embrace here. Two, three. We'll plant them singularity, decimating bolt or we'll pot, trinket, dark lair, rapture three times. There's the legendary one, two, three. Refresh haunt here, drain soul. Rapture, Drain Soul. Look at the damage here. Didn't even get a proc, and the damage is just ridiculous regardless. Drain Soul damage is so strong with this build. We actually got a Shadows Embrace proc, or a Nightfall proc there too. Drain Soul damage is so strong with this build. This mob's at 70% health too. Imagine this mob being at 10% health. It's so strong with this build. You do so much priority funnel single target. I don't know even burst to there, but like, uh, this build for me, has been has maintained the most single target yeah looking at destro looking at demo looking at app this builds maintained the most uh we have another window up here so we'll ps we'll decimating bolt we'll rapture again uh we've gotten pretty unlucky on nightfall procs but it's okay we'll drain soul we'll rapture catch the corruption drain soul again we're at 50 percent drain soul damage right now <laughs> we'll refresh haunt we'll rapture this is gonna fall it is what it is we'll refresh these dots here refresh agony rapture one more time Drain Soul from the last Empowered Effect here. We're at like 50% Drain Soul damage. It's actually absurd what this build can do. A Nightfall proc at the wrong time. Just my life. Uh, refresh the Haunt and refresh the Siphon life. Uh, the big thing with this build is that you do indeed press Decimating Bolt and Singularity on cooldown. So they don't really line up incredibly well with your Dark Lair. Uh, I'll pop, I'm going to pop it now, for example. And we're going to have to wait like... 20-ish seconds on our Dark Lair, but it's just worth it. The more dots you have up, the more drains you can get in, the more buff drains you can get in with Withering Bolt. Uh, we're, we're playing the actual Conduit as well, not the Talent, because the I should, I should have mentioned that too. The Talent is capped essentially at three dots. It's a 15% damage increase per dot you have active, and it stacks three times to 45%. The Conduit, though, is 20% per dot, and there's no limit. It just stacks forever. So you ignore the Talent, play the Conduit. It gives you more room for other effects anyways and you just drain for days so we've got another ps uh, window coming up here in a second this target's pretty low on health i'll keep going and see if we can actually just get a really deep drain here uh i'll soul tap once here uh this should be a pretty big drain actually i'll catch this here pop this i need to refresh our ua let's go into our dark lair now cast that cast this we'll trinket we'll dark lair refresh do this watch this drain soul 48 percent 49 50 percent and when this thing's even lower on health it hits even harder this build just destroys in single target as long it even trinket actually uh, as long as you can maintain the actual effect drain soul ends up being like 50 to 60 percent of your damage probably around 50 in a regular raid based kind of setting but look at this damage breakdown drain soul the max tick 
The max crit is 60k. I've seen 75k. It's 60k. And that's not one full drain soul. Drain soul ticks. Uh, these marks here tick, 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 tick. It ticks. It's not one full drain soul. Uh, I'm AFK and I'm maintaining more than I was as Zestro or Demo. Like, this build does a lot of damage in a patchwork setting. If there's like multiple targets or a lot of movement or it's hard to maintain Malefic Wrath, it can be a little tough. But this build looks good. So if you're asking me what's going to be played in raid in raiding right now, if it's Chaotic Essences, probably Demo for Dog Chomp and stuff. But besides that, you're looking probably an aft Destro world unless they end up buffing things. Um, or nerfing the Decimating Bolt interaction with Drain Soul or uh, seeing where that goes. But right now, to me, in raiding... Destro and Aff, unless it's a niche kind of fight for Demo, look to be the front runners with some builds here. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Day one of Dragonflight pre-patches in the books, and I'm gonna be honest, like Destro and Afflock, I think they look pretty solid. You're playing Necrolord, which is sort of a new covenant to most people, I'd assume. I played Necrolord Aff for a little while in uh, Sepulchre off and on, and, uh, and after not playing that build for a while and jumping into Mythic Rigalon, that was like brain surgery in space, which it feels like now, because you have three Drain Souls to buff, but not one. Uh, that might be fixed at some point. I'm not sure if it's intended. I did report the bug at some point, but I it might just be intended at this point. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, Burn to Ashes Destro looks pretty good, too. I do want to try some Fire and Brimstone play in Mythic Plus over the next couple days or so, depending where it goes. Uh, incinerates hitting really hard. 140k Incinerates are nothing to joke about. They're hitting twice as hard as Chaos Bolts are playing Madness in that build, which very well, once again, could be an OD or Odor Cloak kind of angle as well, because you can apply Havoc to one mob like, in a single target setting, and that mob will still take more damage from your actual single target spells without replicating them. So we'll see where it goes. If you're a Demo fan, I'm sorry. Hopefully buffs come, but at the same time, we're in pre-patch. It's fun. Uh, if it doesn't they don't come i'm sorry but hey we got a few weeks until dragon flights here and demos better in dragon flight uh <laughs> bugs will be fixed regardless strength will be working hopefully in the next week or so and we'll go from there so if i missed any builds in this video i guess more so if i if i missed any builds in the haste bin description or whatever in this video because i didn't talk about all the ones today um leave them down below in the comment section or any questions i'll be sure to get back to you guys once again the weak wars uh the central one here you see you can get it from my discord um link down below typing exclamation point wa in the, that section or go hop, on my, hop to my twitch and do the same thing and chat links are both there all the add-ons and profiles and whatever i can share are indeed there uh, i want to give one huge shout out to my patrons for in the video one more time thank you guys again for all support on patreon ten thousand times i really appreciate it thank you so much guys uh, if you're looking at supporting on patreon it should be linked up here as well as down in the video description below and uh, yeah, I think that about wraps it up. I, I'm pumped for pre-patch. I'm really pumped to see what happens with Shadowlands in two weeks. We didn't get a quest line today. Um, but yeah, I mean, we raid tomorrow night. It should be fun. Uh, I wanted to play Necrolord Lord since Alpha of Shadowlands. And we really didn't get to until pre-patch of the next expansion. But, uh, you know, it's better than nothing. So <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. And I'll catch you all again soon on stream. Peace.